Hello, everybody. It's Lisa Kara from Inbalance Pilates. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, Karen Monet and I are back with another episode of Concussions Anonymous. So thanks so much for being here. Remember to like and share. Share this out if you know anyone that needs this information. Today we're talking about uh, Zoom fatigue and concussions and persistent post-concussion. And so, yeah, remember, if you're watching on YouTube, definitely subscribe to our channel. And if you're watching her on Facebook, let us know if you're watching live or if you are catching the replay. So, hi, Karen. It's so nice to see you. I wish we could hug in person. We're, we're used to doing our interviews in person. So this is a little bit different, but at least doable with uh, technology these days. Yeah. So yeah. how have you been? Um, well, it's been a very interesting for for us as well as mostly everybody. Um, the clinic itself had to shut down obviously for a while and I moved all of the administration and phone services and application process, all the work moved home, but we're open up again. So I started doing assessments again last week back at the clinic um, with all the safety precautions and you know getting all that stuff in order so that we follow the rules and keep everybody safe. Um, but finally, we're able to see people back in the clinic. Still not socially, and, and our filming uh, will have to stay like this for a little bit, but it's good to be back. Exactly. It's good to be back and getting this information out and, yeah, just continuing to to serve and send out some resources to people. So remember on our channel, you can always go back. We have several different episodes, uh, ba you know, based on visual stress and different treatments and practitioners and uh, therapies that you can use, things that have uh, worked for myself as someone that had a concussion. I've taught Pilates for 20 years. And uh, after having a concussion, definitely getting these resources out is so helpful. and turning to someone like Karen uh, with Opticom and the services there, you know, there's so much to help out. And especially with what we're talking about today, Zoom fatigue. And nowadays, you know, so many people have had to pivot as the big word is and, you know, move online, work from home. Uh, you know, everyone's having to do meetings and video calls and telephone calls. So if you're someone that, you know, maybe just headed back to some modified duties or part-time work and you were just getting into the groove of that, but then suddenly, you know, you're adding these video calls and, and things that are just taking up so much more energy and resources, uh, having ways to ease that pain and discomfort of some of the symptoms you might be exacerbating because of the Zoom fatigue and screen fatigue. Uh, we just want to make sure you have access to, to more info that can definitely help. Yeah, um, one of the things I, as you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking about new things that I'd like to say is when our clients with concussions, they're often off work for a while and they're at home and they're able to rest their eyes and they're not in that work environment. <clears throat> they're not in the fluorescent lights and they're not on their computers as much. As soon as they go back to work, and this is pre-COVID, but as soon as they go back to the office, they'd have setbacks. And the reasons for that were very often because they were on their computers again more often, but they were also in that fluorescent lit work environment with the busy action of people all around them. So this is like we brought that trigger home to where people were able to spend less screen time and relax and be in natural light more often. And now they're getting too much screen time, too much near time. So like this, this distance and too much indoor time. So those are three big things that are sort of adding up to making, it's not just Zoom fatigue, it's all of these things coming together in the home, non-relaxing, non-natural environment that are causing a lot of problems. But yes, Zoom fatigue has a name. It's too bad for the company Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things where we're saying, did you Zoom with anyone today? Whether you were Zoom on Zoom or not, so Zoom fatigue, they're yeah. now branded, but we all know Zoom and we're on Zoom today, so um, it works really well. This is our first attempt at a Zoom uh, meeting, um, so bear with us. <laughs> 
Um, it's tough sometimes to figure out all the technology. And I think that's another thing that makes it really difficult for people with concussions is the technology trying to figure out, I mean, I have trouble in a non-concussed brain figuring out technology. And I was telling my son yesterday, I have like a fear, I have a phobia of technology and messing up and having it not work. So mm -hmm. I told a few minutes ago, I'm outside my comfort zone being here, but that's okay. Uh, we're here to help those who are having difficulties. Um, well, with I'm gladly here to always help push you out of your <laughs> comfort zone, my friend. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, I guess what I'd like to say too is I have just finished filming a video called um, what's it called? Brain injury in the virtual world, and that's that whole idea of having a brain injury and having to work online with computers and how, how much difficulty it is, why it affects the brain the way it does to be on screens, and then the kinds of things that people can do about it. So we're, we'll talk a little bit about here today. The video itself is going to be released by Brain Injury Canada. We hope within the next couple of weeks, we're still in the final editing uh, stages of it. But to recap, and that's what we'll do here today, is what can you do to help reduce your screen intolerance, which is the formal word for Zoom fatigue. Um, but the Zoom fatigue is really something. It does tire your brain. Our brains don't operate well when we can't see the full body language of somebody. So looking at a screen full of little faces, it's very hard for our brain to absorb and read the signals coming from, from people when it's like that. So it's working extra hard to focus. And that focusing, we're not using our other senses that we would otherwise use in a formal one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, and so our brain is working extra hard, which leads to a, even a faster fatigue when you're working on screens. How, you, you have courses where you have now much more online interaction with people. How are your clients feeling about working on, on Zoom? Uh, well, from A, from personal experience. So when I uh, first had the head injury, that's when I, when I knew I was going to have to close my studio, my brick and mortar studio, I started to bring a lot more things online. And at that point I was doing the book project and doing some other courses online that really helped me um, just with setting intentions, visualizations, a lot of things that really set me up for healing later. So I'm talking personally right now, but so looking back on mine, I was definitely uh, very stubborn. And at one point I remember I was, you know, in a course where it was an hour of Zoom every day and stubborn meaning oh, wow. I would do it no matter what. Whereas maybe in hindsight, I could have maybe paced a little bit better and realized, hey, if, I, if things are too stacked up with symptoms today, maybe I should just catch the replay. Instead, I, you know, I was a little bit too hard on myself. So I would say when it comes to, you know, to be able to take a step back and prioritize, you still have to prioritize and pace and understand what places fill you up with good energy and, you know, it's, it's kind of worth it versus um, where you do need to take a step back. So, um, my, and I would say for, so now up to speed to now, so I've been doing stuff online for since like 2018. Um, and I would say it's always the variety of, you know, how you're doing and, and how things are fitting in. Um, when it comes to, I have a lot of people in my online programs. The one is called breathe into calm. So that's for anyone but my other one, Healthy Brain and Optimal Posture, is specific to people with post-concussion. And on that, I just made it very, knowing where I had come from, there's a variety of, you know, re, if you want to read something through a PDF, if you want to only listen to the audio file, or if you are at that point where you want to be able to um, get it, dive into like the live group coaching calls. So there's still, because of knowing where I came from, it's, I really am into like offering them whatever works for them because I don't want to be the person that's trying to force them to, you know, spend all day online when their brain just is not, 
uh, ready for that, right? So I would say we, our course, we're really into still you want to pace and you want to really be aware of how you're feeling. So maybe it's not the same expectations of you must be here at this time, show up, right? There's a lot more leeway to um, how you're feeling in that. Um, and then we're all, everyone's very aware that, you know, if it is a day that we are having a group coaching call, really be mindful of what you're doing that day and the day after. So, um, you know, you're not stacking a bunch of yeah. meetings on a day that you have, or um, maybe if you have a big coaching call, maybe that's the day that you have your leftovers and you're not then also stacking on trying to read a recipe and follow instructions, right? So really being aware of what your triggers are, uh, what things flare you up, and then play around with, you know, not wasting all those spoons on those activities on the day that you're having to show up and, and do that kind of thing. Um, but even with last year, I mean, changing everything with people bringing things more online, but stacking on all the other extra duties that we had, you know, any of us that are parents that suddenly had to read instructions on how to homeschool with quotations, mm -hmm. homeschool our children. Like that was, oh, that was a I lot was, in itself. I, working, Lisa. I had a grade 12 student and a fourth year university student, uh, my children. Okay. Uh, so they were, were very well, uh, um, they did very well themselves, just getting their schedule, working on their computers. And even though some of their friends were like, I couldn't do a thing. They couldn't, some kids couldn't get motivated even with the help and others, yep. they did really well. Well, and the social aspect, I mean, the social aspect of missing that social interaction and not being able to see your friends. I'm sure the issues I have, uh, not seven and nine and, um, almost seven and nine, sorry. And um, I'm procrastinating the birthdays here. And um, so yeah, totally different issues than the battle of not socially interacting and in, right. Uh, I'm sure that must have been really difficult and really hard on families to try to get the message through to teenagers about, you know, staying in your own bubble and, and still just trying to tackle any mental health issues and anxiety yeah, and depression. Really and yeah. 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 Um, I wanted to add something to what you were saying earlier. You mentioned that in one of your courses, you give them the option of just the audio version. And that's one of the suggestions I have for when people need to go on group zoom calls, if they could just do the audio version, um, mm -hmm. or even don't do a zoom call, do a phone call. Our, our, our brains, we're used to when we do a phone call, we are just focusing on what we're hearing and we're taking cues from tone of voice. Whereas automatically when we're doing something visually, our brain's like, okay, now I need to take cues from physical. So if you do your um, calls as often as you can, just on the phone, then your brain just sort of zooms into that um, audio information and it can block out the visual because it's not meant to be focusing on the visual, right? Mm -hmm. Something else I, I'd like to add that's it's also in, in the video, but I'm gonna add to it right now is I'm looking at you on a screen and there's a little camera, but I have three monitors. So I have two monitors here and then one monitor down here. When I was, when I was setting up the video for people, I'd say, okay, this is what you need to do before you even watch this video is set up your work environment because everything around you, and, and I'm looking at it now, the sides here, I've got shelves, I've got papers, I have shelves above me that have things on them, all of this, we have focal vision and we have peripheral vision. And everything that's in our peripheral vision, if, if you don't have a brain injury, it's a lot easier to block that out and focus in without even paying attention. But what mm -hmm. I found, many of our clients, they can't block out that peripheral vision. So it's overwhelming looking at the screen, trying to do the Zoom call with everything else that's going on around it. So I've actually put a black piece of a black sheet on my back wall in the office because it had maps and bulletin boards. I can't work with all this visual information going on around me. Mm -hmm. So what we can recommend to people to reduce zoom fatigue is to reduce the peripheral vision fatigue that's adding to the zoom fatigue. So sit yourself in a place 
where you don't have all of this stuff around you. When, when I was um, recording the video, I looked around my desk and I was going, okay, I'm a perfect example of what not to do. It's just stuff is everywhere. It's organized, but there's too much to look at. Mm -hmm. so you can reduce your visual fatigue. So I'll call it visual fatigue and visual overwhelm mm -hmm. by reducing the amount of things within your visual field of vision. So that's a really good tip that, that people might not even think about. It's not just what you're looking at forward. It's all the other things that your eyes collecting. Definitely. And so one thing I have a big, big problem with is I can't even watch Facebook lives or if someone's in my screen where they have a ceiling fan, if oh, I see God. that ceiling fan going and the, oh, good Lord, I can't even, I'm out, I'm out, <laughs> can't do it. It's really, Lisa, really distracting. Lisa, that is flicker. And that yes. flicker is like the number one trigger to visual stress. So just for those of you who haven't. Um, we did do a previous episode all about yeah, that. Back in, yes, go back to, yes, yeah, in Concussion Genomus on YouTube. Visual stress is the hyperactivation of the visual cortex in the presence of triggering visual information. The visual cortex back here, the information that's coming in through the eyes, once it's received by the brain, if the brain is easily hyperactivated, which is in the case of people with concussions, migraines, learning difficulties, a lot of neurological and neurodevelopmental conditions have this sensitivity to light and movement and flicker and that fan, that's flicker, but so is a computer screen as it refreshes. So flicker of the computer screen is adding to Zoom fatigue. And when you're mm -hmm. scrolling and the text is moving up the page, that's flicker as well. So in the movement of people moving on the screens, you've got maybe eight screens up and you're doing that. Definitely, if people, when people do their walk and talks, again, yeah, it's, I just got a two note. So those are all visual triggers and they're all little visual triggers while you're trying to focus you're looking not only are you looking at a light which is a screen you're mm -hmm. looking at all that movement on the screen so again mm -hmm. another reason to and I think this is one of the suggestions I had in the video is put a towel over the screen until you really need to look at somebody because just closing your eyes mm -hmm. the light is still coming in it's still being received and it's still flickering. So blocking the screen off with some, like a small piece of cardboard or something like that, unless you need to look, will help extend, you said spoons, I, I call it cognitive dollars. You'll have more cognitive dollars to spend on thinking if you reduce the amount of triggers that your brain is receiving. So mm -hmm. clean up the visual environment, block the screen if you can, reduce mm -hmm. as many sources of flicker and movement that are in your visual field because that flicker is going to trigger you. Mm -hmm. um, those are those are some of the top top suggestions. I always tell my clients as well when we're doing any of our group in right now in our, our breathe into calm program um, that when we do have the group coaching calls, have a notebook by you because again, so that if you jot down, if you have a question, if you have a response, sometimes again just that. Um, the planning of your response, you know, if it's something that it's an interactive or Q&A, having your notebook handy so that, you know, you're not forgetting uh, your points or your questions that you want to ask, because it can be really fatiguing to try to keep track of listening, watching. If you have, you know, many of us use ring lights or lighting. Uh, we always talk about our lighting and lashes. And uh, we, so, you know, having that light, um, those distractions another going back to communication i've always said another great app that really really helped me was voxer because if you don't have to do that back and forth telephone conversation it's like a walkie talkie app so it's a really great way to communicate with the people that you really want to stay close with but maybe you don't have the energy to set a time to get on the phone with them or um you know, if it's hard to go with the flow or whatnot, I find that's a really good one. It's actually not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing that Zoom fatigue has a, it, it's named now. Because mm -hmm. before that, people with concussions and head injuries, when they would tell um, their family or their work coworkers or their bosses that I'm having a lot of difficulty with my screen, the things that they could fix, like display settings and things, did not do, did not do enough to help. And people just didn't 
believe them that, you mm -hmm. know, come on, you know, get back on the computer. So unfortunately that would happen, but now we actually have a word. We can call it screen intolerance or we can call it Zoom fatigue. People get it now because there's enough um, uh, news, media, articles, stories, people sharing on Facebook that Zoom fatigue is a real thing. Now mm -hmm. it's even worse for people who have concussions, but people who don't are starting to experience it as well and then can empathize. Right? We can empathize that, yes, I get it. It is really difficult. Well, their breaking point was so much sooner than ours, but that it gives a sense of understanding for those of us who, um, who might need a, a reminder of how difficult it is for people with head injuries and concussions. Definitely. And not that we should ever care what other people think about us, but um, you know, if you're having to show up with your big blue blockers on, that's okay, right? If you're having to show up with your tinted lenses, but you're on a call with people that have no concept of head injury, brain injury, right. and, and the things that, you know, um, it's okay. Like pat yourself on the back for the fact that you're showing up and you're even trying to be productive and positive and contribute, right? You Sometimes we need to cheer for ourselves a little bit more and realize what it's taken for us to get to this point where we are able to show up and contribute, uh, whether it's to work or socially or whatever, um, because it can be easy to just isolate and, um, you know, not even try to participate in any of these things. So the times that you can really get in there and uh, contribute and, and, you know, be on a call like that, take the time to be proud of yourself for the baby steps and the big steps that you're, that you're able to, to get through. Um, I'm going to mention, uh, I mentioned the desk area, but also the, I'm just going through my presentation here. Um, the Society of Optometrists or the Canadian Association of Optometrists recommends something called the 2020 rule. So it's 20 minutes then take a break and take 20 seconds. So you can sing your hand washing song mm -hmm. away from the computer at something in the distance. If you're looking, I mentioned earlier, too much near time. If you're looking mm -hmm. in the near area too much, you can actually cause, it can be temporary, but distance vision problems. Your distance vision cannot work. It may not work as well as it did because you're overworking the near vision. So the 20-20-20 rule is every 20 minutes, look for 20 seconds at something 20 feet or further in the distance and pick something natural. Pick a plant, look out your window at a tree off in the distance, something natural, something green, even if it's a picture. There's some research we referenced in the video as well that research was done showing that even just looking at a picture of something in nature can calm the brain. So when you clean up your desk area and you take all these visual things away, Make sure to add plants, whether they're fake or not, or pictures of forests, or find your perfect place and put a picture there. It actually calms your brain just to look at that. So that can really help counteract the Zoom fatigue by giving you that 20 second break. Now, what I also suggest is at that time, get up and stretch and move around because what happens is when we're sitting here at our desks all the time, we're tense. We get our muscle, that mouse knot, we call it at the back. Posture, it's all yeah, about posture, yeah. yep. So mm -hmm. take, I don't think it's a bad idea to consider that 20 second beat to pause, get up, stretch, move around and look off in the distance to relax your visual system and to unclench your body. Those are great so that's tips, that's really, fatigue, um, yes. I guess reduce reducer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, mention and, uh, about the posture because honestly, looking at a screen and getting tense is going to cause you to to be stressed. Oh, totally, it causes it exacerbates any neck issues, any back issues. So always with posture, you know, being able to think of that string on top of your head, lengthening you up, opening across your collarbones. Uh, breathing exercises are very helpful. If you're already going into a call feeling a little bit of anxiety, doing some quick breathing exercises uh, just to get that inner calm and peace goes so far, as well as taking the time to visualize. So if you have, you know, a 
big meeting coming up um, that's a little bit longer than you would normally be on or uh, you know just has to take more energy and resources take the time daily to visualize that call that meeting whatever it is going smoothly and that the next day you are feeling fantastic there's so much to be said for spending time visualizing meditating meditating on our health uh, visualizing that we are getting better every day, that our brain is healing every day. Uh, the minute you have the negative thoughts, replace them. You know, we have to break these patterns of um, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, right? We've got to dig deep in ourselves sometimes to really be able to see those baby steps and keep going. And, and as I said, just visualize the next call that you have that, maybe you've been nervous about before, try to spin it in your mind to all the positive things and, and you know how you're going to, how much, how amazing you're going to feel after you've accomplished that and uh, you're still feeling fine, right? Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things I can say to help with Zoom fatigue. Uh, so I mentioned just briefly adjusting the brightness. The problem with adjusting the brightness too low is that you now have to strain to see. It's kind of like when people wear dark sunglasses, the light, they're very sensitive to light, but they put these dark sunglasses on and now they're straining to see. So you're solving mm. one problem and causing another one. Um, so one of the suggestions we have is don't just change the brightness, change the type of light coming off your screen. Uh, some people try the Eflex, which takes it to a cool to a warm uh, screen color. So more of a peachy yellow. That doesn't work for everybody and it is probably the least color chosen by our clients is that yellowy um sorry um peachy um orange most of our clients are more in, within green green turquoise blue blue purple purple sort of that mm -hmm. that section rarely ever just blue but definitely um less of the those warm tones and you can adjust the color of your computer screen using software. Um, for Apple, in the display accommodations, there is an option for color filter. So you can do it on your phone, your tablet, and your computer. You can actually put a filter on the screen. So don't reduce the brightness, change the color coming off the screen. And that way you're going to be less triggering, you're triggering your brain less. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't have an, um, uh, any a Mac product or an Apple product, the Samsung um, Android 9 on Samsung, you can um, find that in accommodations for your phones, uh, but there's software as well. So uh, at opticom.ca, we do have screen tinting software and it allows you to change your full screen to a color that you're more comfortable with. It starts off with 10 different color options and you can go through those 10 to find the one that you're most comfortable with, and then you can fine tune it to like whatever 256, the, um, the Windows color spectrum. So that's a really good thing if you're on screens is to work with changing the, the light coming off the screen, and you can do that with these filters. We'll link that in the comments below and in the description in YouTube, for sure. We'll pop any of those links in there. Um, I'll also, put my link for my current program, which is Breathe Into Calm. Uh, it, it's amazing to just be able to access breathing exercises to get that inner calm. So I'll link that in and I'll link in my other course, Healthy Brain and Optimal Posture. And you are going to definitely let us know when the video's out. We're going to yeah. share that I think, out. I think the best thing to do is uh, Visual Stress Canada. That's the association okay. that's done the video with Brain Injury for Brain Injury Canada. Um, we're going to be setting up a link in there where you can go and sign up will you get an email alert um, for the video when it's released and then all the material all the supporting material and the research and um, links and worksheets and things like that will all be at visualstress.ca we're not just sure where the hashtag is but it'll be or the hash is it'll be visualstress.ca forward slash brain injury canada maybe we're not sure what it is but we will okay. if people go to visualstress.ca they can sign up right away to get on the contact list and then we'll let people know. Okay. And a quick tip everyone can do right away, right today is set that reminder, as Karen said about the 20, 
your, your rule there. Set that reminder to, to be doing that. And if you need any help with any posture exercises, I'm your girl uh, for Pilates and posture exercises for just that daily movement at your desk. I think I've got another video on my page, my YouTube channel, Lisa Kara, which is optimal mo movements um, at your computer desk. So I can link that into our other, our YouTube channel as well, Concussions Anonymous. Um, and remember, as we said, to definitely like and share this out. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. We'll definitely have some more episodes um, yeah, we have coming episode to you. Three. With our, yeah, yeah, we have three um, that we had done previously that'll be up. And they're still on our face, my Facebook page in Balance Pilates Studio. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to thank you so much for meeting up today and being Thanks able for to, me. to, oh, you're welcome. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, no, it was amazing to see you. And I'm so glad yeah, that you too. got that video out for everyone. It's such great resources. And yeah, now this yes. is the first of hopefully many. So what I'm going to be going out with, and we had talked about this earlier, I'm going to go out and get input from people. What do you want to see? What type of training? What type of information? Do you want me to walk you through a full um, visual ergonomic assessment of your home and office? Um, those are the types of things that I'm going to be listing and hopefully getting uh, input on what the next thing we should do is. So I'll be oh, right that's here. fantastic. Well, I'll be sharing out all of that stuff for you because it's, I know how needed it is. And yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Remember to share this out and let us know if you'd like to be a guest on Concussions Anonymous, if you'd like to share your story and you can always sign up to both of our email lists to just stay current on what offerings we have going on and different resources. So mine is at inbalancepilates.ca and Karen? You've got opticalm, O-P-T-I-C-A-L-M.ca or the new visualstress.ca, which is the association. And we'll be doing a lot more of the outreach and advocacy and education there. Good stuff. And I hope to see some of you in Breathe Into Calm. So let me know if, uh, if you're looking to get into that next live program. And yes, I hope everyone has a wonderful summer, wonderful day. Enjoy heat it. Wave. Yeah, heat wave. I know we're just heading to the beach. I can hear some mamas, mamas out there. Everyone's ready to go to the beach. So <laughs> you have a wonderful day, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank for you. And uh, to all of those listening, um, I hope we helped you out a bit today. For sure. Well, have a great day, friend, and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.